Okay, these are the condensing units for our unit, our, our home. And this large, they're actually both sized, they're both sized as being two tons. Even though they're different shapes, the two tons and two tons is four tons of cooling for this home. Um, both of these units are in excess of 14 years. That's their estimated service life average. Um, they're engineered on paper to last 20, but you know, Las Vegas and it's going to give you 14 around here. Um, this unit was either in 2004 or 1999. I'm not sure I have to do the homework. This unit was. I'm just not sure about this one at all. I'm gonna have, again, I'm gonna have to do my homework, but I can tell. I can tell both of these systems operate R22 refrigerant. Okay, that's an obsolete system. Obsolete, yeah, an obsolete system. It's an obsolete refrigerant. It's no longer manufactured in the United States. It's no longer imported legally into the United States. Um, yes, there are stockpiles of it. Yes, you can still buy it. Yes, it's expensive. It's very expensive. And then, they do have drop-ins. or alternative refrigerants. And they have their own cost, too. I mean, they're not cheap, either. And, because you can't get R22. You know? And, they run 10 to 30% less efficient. These systems are already inefficient. They're like SEER 10s. And today, we're up 14 to 17, 18 SEER. So, you already got an inefficient system if you put a drop in, and if you then it's even going to be more inefficient. It, it'll, it'll cool, but at what cost? Always at what cost? Operating cost, for that matter. So you have that, and if you have a, an air conditioning guy that comes in and and you know convinces you that a drop in refrigerant is the way to go, then you might as well put him on payroll because there aren't going to be very many technicians that are going to want to follow that. In fact. About every technician that comes and services this equipment is going to, and rightfully so, is going to encourage you to update these systems. And that'll include the inside systems too, because you have evaporator coils for those. So, now what we got here is wrong. Okay, these are the electric service disconnects, and they're fine. They're over here on the wall. Okay. They should be sealed on three sides to help prevent moisture infiltration into this wall. The refrigerant lines, the low pressure ones at least, they should be insulated. And they were. And when they were installed, this insulation was acceptable. But it no longer meets today's energy current. Since 2015, um, it would be a, a more rigid protective cover. These are called Schrader valves. Good luck looking that up in the dictionary. But anyway, those are refrigerant service valve ports. And those caps, uh, they should be anti-theft. I get it. You, you got a lock on your gate. I get that. But those are things that should have been had. Oh, and we got one more. One more. Still going. This cover is held in place with tape. I mean, you shouldn't. You shouldn't hold your cover in place with tape like that. So that's both of the units. What do we learn today? We learned that they're too old. Oh, we learned another thing. You won't know this yet. They're overfused. They're overfused. They're supposed to use, like, for example, this is a newer one. Maximum fuse 20 amps. This is probably 25 amps. It's I can't tell. There's tape over the the cover. Minimum is 20. But inside the electric service panel, there's 30 amp breakers. 30 amp breakers. So they're overfused, which means the breaker will not trip to protect these systems in a timely manner. It'll these systems will get much hotter before the breaker trips. So, that's what it is. so we learned that these units are overfused. We learned that we should have insulation. Excuse me. Yeah, sealant. Okay. But the um, uh, disconnect boxes should be sealed. We learned that we've got the wrong kind of foam on our refrigerant lines. And the foam that we do have, let's just say it's grandfathered in. Okay, Grampy. All right. Well, this is grandfathered in. That's not grandfathered in. That's not grandfathered in. We learned that we don't have anti-theft trigger valves. We learned that we have tape on the cover, and we also learned that this is our systems are, are very, very old, very old. They've done everything you would expect them to do. It would be prudent to budget for replacement.
That's more than my opinion. I mean, it's just, it would be prudent to budget for a replacement. They have the old R22 refrigerant instead of the newer, well, there's different ones, but mostly in residential, we're using R410A, and that's the most predominant refrigerant that we're using right now. So we don't have the right refrigerant, the systems are old, insulation, caps, tape, 